Your Massachusetts real estate market update for the week of January 23rd, 2023. So we're going to talk about single family and condo data as always. I also figured out a way to gauge actual buyer activity that's going on in the market today before the properties and the people go pending. Uh, interest rates, it's like a death by a million cuts, but the wrong way. So we're going to talk about that. And we're also going to check as always in on distressed properties in Massachusetts, see what's going on there. And it was a hard decision this week, but ultimately I decided to take us to Weston to take a look. Look at this stunning home. Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent that sold more than a thousand houses and one of the top agents in the state of Massachusetts. If you like hearing about the Massachusetts real estate market, then be sure to hit that like and subscribe button below. But let's dig into the data and we're going to start with the single family market. There are currently 3,232 units on the market. Inventory continues to drop and it's because of a pickup in the marketplace. Supply at this point is not keeping up with demand. We are really going to dig into this pickup when we start talking about the properties that went under agreement. So stay tuned because that's coming up. Now, the number of more houses available compared to the same time last year shrunk to 1,145 units compared to last week's number of 1,260. We had 587 new listings that came on the market this week and love seeing the new listings coming on the market because this is an increase from last week's activity of 549 that came on the market, but still actually 10% off of last year's numbers of 653. We had 719 houses go under agreement this week, 719. I had to go back to November in order to find a week where we had this much sales activity. What's even more crazy though, is that we were only 1.6% off of last year's numbers when 731 units went under agreement. Is this just a small bump in the road to a slower market? I had someone say it was a head fake last week. I also had someone say that I lost all credibility. Hey guy, data's data. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below, but take a look at this market activity chart. Now, now, to be fair, this isn't perfect. This comes from a showing facilitation company that a lot of us top agents use. I also couldn't simply put out all Massachusetts data in there because they make you do it town by town. So that means we're looking at a snapshot for data from the I-95 corridor and in to Boston. It's for all types of listings, single family condos, as well as multifamilies. I just felt this was the best we could do for a great snapshot. But take a look at this graph. The low point was around Christmas. That makes sense, right? And then the beginning of January went back to like the average week to week weeks that we saw before the holidays, but then we saw an 18% increase in showing activity last week with another 6% sh increase in showing activity this week. There was one week in November that had showing activity this high. Take that week out. I actually had to go back to the beginning of October to see showing activity like that. Incredible. Now, a quick recap. That was the peak of the fall market in October. This is the dead winter market. Love to hear your thoughts. Are you a buyer and have jumped back into the market? If so, why? Are you getting ready to jump back? in the market, then why? Help me with some research here. There are 474 homes that sold this week with an average sales price of $675,000 and a median sales price of $540,000. Months of inventory. This is how we gauge what type of market we're in. Zero to five months is considered a seller's market. Five to seven equal market. Seven months or more is considered a buyer's market. Closer to zero you get, the stronger seller's market. This week, months of inventory stayed flat at 1.13 months worth of inventory. And this indicates that it is a strong seller's market. I said it last week, but I think it bears importance to say again, with this increase in activity, I feel like it's about to get stronger. Sellers who are contemplating selling this spring might just want to consider coming to the market a little bit earlier, that first seller's advantage, if you will. Now on to the condo market. We had 1,790 condos on the market as of Monday. Inventory, it decreased slightly, but it decreased this week. The amount of additional inventory that a buyer has to look at today versus today last year increased to 322 units. And this are decreased to 322 units, and this is compared to last week's 345 units. There were 353 newly listed condos last week. Now, this was 11% behind new listing inventory coming on the market this same week last year. We had 325 condos that went under agreement last week, and this is a great bump from last week's 288 number, but it's still 20% off from last year's numbers. This leads me to a question as to whether it's just a pickup in that single family market. I don't know, because we're not really seeing too much in the condo market. 30 condos closed last week with an average sales price of $735,000 and that median sales price of $500,000. Meanwhile, months of inventory moved up to 1.62 months versus last week's 1.6 months. Do you like hearing about what's going on in the Massachusetts real estate market? Then smash that like button. It makes a huge difference and helps me with those YouTube gods. Now let's talk about mortgages. As I said earlier, it's been like death of a million cuts except their additions. Slightly each day, rates have gone up. 
by a small fraction here and then another small fraction here. But add them up and it wasn't the greatest week for interest rates. But really, interest rates are kind of stuck. They're just kind of waiting for that next big data dump to really get an idea if that slowing inflation is actually a real thing, or maybe if it was just an outlier. My guess is that interest rates are headed lower this week due to a stellar two-year auction in the bond market. The key takeaway here is, and I quote, this was an absolutely blowout auction, and one which is clearly mocking the Fed's higher for longer intention is demand for two-year paper as well below the Fed's market implied terminal rate of two years suggests that even the smartest guys in the room are convinced the Fed will be cutting quickly and aggressively as soon as the second half. Now look, this is will affect the 10-year bond, which will also then affect our mortgage rates. But then I stumbled onto this article. I certainly hope you're not falling for this. In this article, he's quoted as saying, inflation has not peaked and the data confirms this. I'll put a link to this as well as that two-year treasury article in the description below for you to take a look and come to your own opinion. Now, onto foreclosures. Accounting for all single-family condos and multifamily properties, we currently have 100 and six foreclosures for sale in the state of Massachusetts. This was a huge drop from last week's number of 124 units available. And currently there are 20 short sale properties for sale in Massachusetts versus 27 last week. Total for this week of distressed properties are 126 properties for sale. The percentage of distressed properties to available inventory actually decreased to 2.21% of all available inventory in the state of Massachusetts. And this was a pretty big drop from last week's number of 2.59%. I wonder where all this distressed inventory is going. What are your thoughts? And now onto that low luxury estate in Weston. The home located at 7 Brittle Path in Weston, it's just stunning. This is a five bedroom, seven full and two half bath home that's 6,215 square feet above grade and 9,265 square feet in total and nestled on 1.6 acres. I'm pretty sure you'll be pretty impressed the moment you walk through the door and take in the grand two-story foyer with gleaming chocolate hardwood floors throughout and circular staircase. Soaring ceilings and some floor to ceiling windows allow the sunlight to just pour in to this house. Oh man, that kitchen. Wow. To start, it's two stories. An appliance package that would make Wolfgang Puck blush. And not one, but two huge islands. The study, unbelievable. The wine cellar, even a non-guy like me appreciates that place. The fitness center, yeah, I could spend some time there. The movie theater, pretty cool. The large stone patio, just absolutely incredible. All that and it's the pool that really gets me. It's an infinity edge pool and hot tub with fire pit and pool house that has an outdoor fireplace overlooking the lush landscape ground. Now the sellers are asking 11.5 million for this stunning home. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs? My information's in the description below and you can also visit www.youtuberealestateagent.com and I will actually reach out to you whichever way is easiest for you. That's all that matters. I love to talk about real estate so whether you're looking to buy or sell a home in the next nine or 90 days, then I'd love to chat with you and find out a little bit more about your real estate goals as we head into 2023 here. Questions or comments about the market data, then drop me a line in the comment section below. You take the time to watch the video, so I'm always going to take the time to respond to you. As I always say, an informed person, well, they're a powerful person. So until next time.